My name is John Benjamin. I'm the director of the Diplomatic Academy at the Foreign Office and I've been a member of the Diplomatic Service for over 32 years. Um, I'm from London and uh, have lived all over the world as you'd expect in a career like this. An ambassador is, uh, or High Commissioner, it's the same thing effectively, uh, is the main representative of the British government in country X or Y. And so primarily you're in charge of the relations between those countries or that country and the UK. Um, and wherever you are, you're in charge of our main kind of foreign policy goals, which are to protect British citizens around the world, protect ourselves from security threats, uh, to promote our values, uh, what we stand for internationally, and also to increase our prosperity through international trade and commercial relationships. Um, and the ambassador is representing not just the Foreign Office but the whole of the British government. So there are up to 30 government departments which have representatives overseas in embassies or consulates or international uh, our representations to international organisations. And uh, in Ghana, for example, I had 10 government departments represented there, the Ministry of Defence, the Home Office, uh, UK Visas, DFID, importantly, which is the uh, part of the British government that oversees our aid uh, and economic assistance to developing countries. And part of my role was to convene all of them, make sure we had a, a common plan, um, we had a, a, a single narrative about what HMG was doing, and that we, um, we, were, we were coherent in our approach to the government of Ghana. There are lots of qualities around uh, having to be very confident at public speaking, appearing in the media, traditional media, social media, print, electronic media, uh, and in the age of social media also having increasingly to dialogue with, uh, sometimes face down uh, critics, um, an amount, a certain amount of abuse uh, as well, that's part, sadly part of the, the modern communications reality. So having to be a good advocate. Uh, having to maintain good standards in doing so, but being thick-skinned, uh, being outward. Um, there's also an, a lot of representational work, a lot of events to go to, uh, quite a few events to speak at. Um, so you have to be confident in doing that and you have to be uh, able to do so in other languages when called upon. And if you look at people who, who are in here, though Probably there's a majority of people from the areas you might expect, things like inter politics, international relations, languages. There's also plenty of people who did, say, a science degree or, or something on the face of it, not immediately connected. So um, I wouldn't say you have to study X, Y or Z. Obviously, uh, being good at languages is a bonus, it's a plus, and you will be tested in language aptitude which means your theoretical ability to learn difficult languages as part of the, uh, the, the hiring process. Um, but there's no academic discipline you have to have studied. Um, it's more about people who are outward looking, uh, curious about the world, are resilient because you may have to uh, deal with particularly challenging situations in conflict zones or in, in developing countries uh, without all the infrastructure and support systems you, you'd expect here. Um, so there's some of the qualities we're looking at. Um, we're looking at, at, at curious, internationally minded, resilient, hardworking, talented people. As far as is possible, do something and concentrate your efforts on something you feel passionate about. Um, that will give you not just the financial necessities we all have from employment, but that extra degree of passion and interest and involvement and a feeling that you can, you can bring about change and you can help other people. Uh, of course, each individual will have their own take on what that, on what that means. Uh, 
the best way is to, if you go on www.gov.uk, easiest to remember, then there you'll find all the ministries listed. Go into the Foreign Commonwealth Office and then on the home page um, towards the bottom is working for us. And for the first time effectively in a decade we've opened up other uh, recruitment schemes, uh, direct entrants who are hired on a, a two-year uh, fixed contract but potentially with the possibility of staying on afterwards. All the information is on that website. We take on graduate interns, uh, summer interns, obviously as the word implies on a, for a more limited uh, time frame. Um, but on the website that I mentioned uh, there's a lot of information there. But it is highly competitive. The Foreign Office remains one of the most popular bits of the overall civil service to work for. And for the, in the fast stream, for example, for those 50, 60 people we're currently taking, there may be uh, 20,000 applicants or more. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot, but you have to be in it to win it. And, yeah, and after all, if they take someone like me, then anybody's got a chance. <laughs>